hope you're all keeping well and having a good day so far. Welcome to uh, Columbia Asia's um, Health Transformation webinar. We're really glad that you're here with us today. Uh, my name is Dr. Diana Wee. I'm a consultant clinical psychologist uh, currently um, in Columbia Asia Miri. And today our webinar is entitled Emotional Health, Tackling Anxiety and Stress. So, um, as an overview in terms of objectives of what we're going to cover today, um, we'll be talking about how to better understand emotions, stress, anxiety and depression. Uh, also give you an opportunity to do a quick self check in, a self assessment. Um, and then we're going to deep dive into some helpful strategies that you can consider uh, upholding in your life um, to help uh, manage stress a bit better um, and also share some helpful resources. So if you're ready, uh, get a cup of, uh, a cup of tea or coffee and then let, let's dive in. Um, a quick introduction as well. Um, some of you might not know me. Um, so this is a picture of Columbia Asia Hospital that's where I'm um, uh, based at the moment. Prior to returning to Malaysia, I was actually um, uh, based in the Autism Association of Western Australia. That's in Perth. If you ever go there, I highly recommend you visit the place. Um, I also regularly conduct um, professional uh, consultancies and uh, speaking engagements. So uh, as well as um, a big part of mine is for individuals with special needs um, and autism. So uh, these are areas of services um, that might be available um, if you're interested in them. Okay, let's talk a little bit about why you're here today, stress and anxiety. Uh, the buzzword for this year is definitely COVID-19. Um, 2020, what a year. I mean, all of us just can't wait to hopefully wrap this thing, uh, you know, all this up. Um, and the pandemic, we can appreciate that it's been incredibly stressful for everyone. Um, and the reason is because there's been multiple stresses, different stresses, stresses and challenges from all directions. You know, just constant unpredictability. Um, there's fear of diseases, health anxiety. Um, the prolonged lockdown and restricted movement uh, just leaves people feeling really isolated uh, and disconnected from others. There's also um, constant stress from work. Uh, how do we work from home? Uh, how do we still maintain the KPIs? Um, the financial worries, um, as well as, you know, children, uh, schools have been opening and closing um, and having to do homeschooling from home um, and, and juggling house chores and things like that. Um, all that just really adds to the stress and on top of that, because individuals are sort of trapped at home much more often together, um, disagreements are bound to happen. Uh, quarrels and, and you know, uh, the, the rates of quarrels, divorce and domestic violence has just been on the increase um, during this pandemic time. Um, and on top of that, we would also add to uh, aspects of, you know, our, our life structure, our usual norms are not there. So people are just unsure. What do we do? Uh, morning changes tonight and things like that. Yeah. And so as a community, we have all been challenged to a new level uh, of uh, novel situations. But I, I just want to take a moment to affirm um, each and every one of you, all of us, and, and congratulate you that, you know, you, you have really... Uh, try your best to adapt in this environment and I just want to invite you to just give yourself a pat on the back because it's not easy um, and yet you you are persisting on um, and upholding resilience. I would also really like to take this uh, special opportunity to thank all our uh, frontliners, people who are uh, day in day out serving the community, the whole Malaysian community, parents, teachers, bankers, everyone. Um, that has been rallying together to get this uh, thing going. So we're really experiencing humanity in a different way. Um, let's talk a little bit about stress. Probably a bit more personal to us, yeah? So what is stress? So essentially, humans have a built-in stress response system. Our bodies are, are amazing. It's been built into handle situations and changes that we perceive as difficult, you know, potentially threatening or dangerous. Um, and essentially, uh, it does a pretty good job when it's juggling things uh, like that. It is only when situations get prolonged or intense that you start to see uh, complications. So essentially, stress is a reaction um, when a situation impacts a person's stable state. Yeah, we might perceive that the demands um, or the threat is beyond our personal uh, resources. We can't quite cope with it. And as a result of that, our human response in sort of the three Fs, okay, it, we could either respond by fight, where we try to, you know, 
fight the stressor, fight the thing that is stressful, or we might go on a flight mode where we try to avoid and escape and run away from it. Um, or sometimes some of us might even get to a freeze mode where we just uh, go blank. We don't know how to deal with it and we just freeze. Yeah. Um, so the body goes on a, a, a highly aroused state where adrenaline is uh, released within our body and it increases our heart rate, our blood pressure, boosts the energy supply, our cortisol increases as well, and there's higher blood sugar levels uh, in our bloodstream. Yep. And essentially, in the beginning stages, um, the that sort of responses is actually our body preparing ourselves for optimal performance. Yeah. So um, some of you might not know this, but there are actually two types of stress. One's uh, called a stress, which we consider as a positive stress. You know, it might be like uh, stress of going, uh, you know, when we're getting married, we're planning for a wedding or a planning for a holiday. We have a little bit of butterflies in our tummy, but those are good stress. It sort of uh, helps us to be uh, to perform better, to plan better, things like that. But distress, on the other hand, uh, is a negative stress where the, the stress is too high and too long, um, too far off. And by then, um, if you look at it in the chart um, from one to five, distress would be somewhere about a four or five, where the stress is way too high and too long and we get overloaded and we might essentially um, burn out or break down. Yep. So how does stress affect our body? Uh, different ones have uh, different stress reactions, but most of the time it could be things like, you know, we have difficulty concentrating, uh, we might have um, heart rates increasing, our joints and muscles might be really tense and really stiff over here. Our immune system might be weakened um, and we fall sick a bit easily. Um, our gut as well. A lot of our um, clients and patients talk about having um, sort of bloating, uh, gastric, GERD, or even um, indigestion and diarrhea. Yeah. And so if the stress is prolonged and heightened, so um, we start seeing lots of health issues coming up um, and it starts to impact on a person's daily functioning as well, including their work performance, uh, their relationships and things like that, and even potential um, self-harm or suicidal ideations or substance abuse. Yeah. So Today, um, I'd like to share with you uh, perhaps a different way to, to relate with things. Yeah? Um, I'm sharing with you uh, a process that we call emotional wellness process that I've came up with. It's a five-step uh, system that um, I would highly recommend for you to uh, use for yourself as well as your loved ones. You could share it with them. So it starts off with a, a, a helpful self-assessment. Like, you know, from time to time, we want to do a quick check-in. Where am I at at the moment in terms of my emotional health. Yep. So question one would be, how do I feel? What emotion am I feeling? Um, how do we do a quick uh, self rating? Body and system scan, identifying what's bothering us and talking about strategies. So don't worry, I'm going to bring you through one by one. OK, start with number one. OK, so if you've got a pen and pencil with you, I invite you to just uh, put a little jot some notes if you like to. Um, and, and this might just help you to be more engaged in our discussion. And if there's any uh, questions that you have, we can leave them to the Q&A uh, at the end of the webinar. So question one um, that I'd like to invite you to please uh, answer. How are you feeling today? It's, it's, it's sad that I can't see you on the fa you know, face to face. I'd love to be able to see you, um, but I can only do it through the screen now. So how are you feeling? Are you feeling happy? Uh, anxious, worried, sad. You have just write an emotion. There's no right or wrong answers. And then secondly, I'd like to invite you to do a, um, a self rating. So we call them uh, SUT scores, so subjective units of distress. From a one to 10, where are you at the moment? Um, one is you're calm, you're chill, things are fine, you're coping really well. Uh, five is somewhere in between, things are getting a bit stressful and you're not quite, uh, you know, it's affecting you to a certain extent. Um, but you're still able to continue your daily functioning. And 10, uh, on the other hand, is where the stress is really, really high. You're feeling so distressed um, and uh, it's getting too much. And sometimes it feels like things are getting out of control. OK, um, so just give yourself a score. Right. And next, number three. Let's do a quick body and symptom scan, OK? I would like to invite you to just scan through your body right now from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Where do you feel any sense of discomfort? 
Is it uh, a physical um, discomfort? Is it on your head, uh, on your shoulders, on your neck, or your tummy? Or is it heaviness on your chest? Um, or is it like a cognitive type of symptom? You know, it could be um, that you're having difficulty concentrating, or is it a memory loss? Um, is it that there's a lot of negative thinkings and worries all the time? Um, or are you experiencing some sort of emotional um, symptoms like feeling really sad or stress, irritability? And are there any changes in your behaviours? Yeah, just take a quick moment to just jot one or two things down. To make your life easier, I'm just going to also share with you some uh, checklists. Uh, that you can use um, for yourselves as well as to help um, uh, people that you know to just uh, identify potential red flags. I want to put a little uh, an important disclaimer here, yeah, that these are checklists. It doesn't, it's not diagnostic, okay? So um, when you go through the list, uh, don't just because some of the symptoms are high, you immediately think, oh dear, oh dear, I'm definitely depressed, or I'm definitely having a uh, disorder. It's not, it's not that purpose. It's more of you to have a, a, a quick check-in um, and if you identify some of the symptoms, I would highly encourage you to talk to uh, your medical doctor, any uh, professionals that you uh, regularly see, just, just bring this up with them and get their input and their guidance on what might be mo the most helpful um, way ahead um, in terms of wellness. Okay, so I'm going to um, bring up three, um, three common um, symptom checklists for you to identify on. First would be stress. So um, the same four quadrants, stress would, you would, um, if someone is stressed, if you're experiencing stress, there's often emotional dysregulation, difficulty staying calm. You might notice yourself or, or the others having a bit more of a personality change. Uh, we might become more irritable, a bit more sensitive. Sometimes people say something and immediately hurts us, like how could they say that uh, to me? You know, we might feel more angry um, and a bit more restless. Cognition-wise, you find that um, there might be a, a, a decrease in the usual cognitive performance, difficulties focusing, concentrating, often distracted, you know, constant worrying. Physical, as we said, you know, there might be those chest type of uh, symptoms, rapid heart breathing, some trembling, fatigue, difficulty sleeping, um, gut issues, um, and behaviors. Uh, often a lot of restlessness, avoidance, lifestyle issues. You know, your, your sleep routine and your eating routines might be disrupted. Yep, those are um, common stress symptoms. Um, often these kind of symptoms get confused because sometimes people think that, oh dear, um, they have a lot of health issues. Um, so I would encourage you, if you have some of the symptoms, um, go in, as I said, check with your medical doctor. We just want to rule out whether it's a physical health issue or is it um, actually due to emotional and psychological stress, in which both case uh, there are uh, appropriate treatment strategies uh, that could be helpful. Next is what we call anxiety. Um, anxiety has quite a lot of similarities with stress. Um, however, anxiety has more of a common of fear. There's a lot of fear involved with it and constant worries. Um, during this pandemic time, I have a lot of people that came um, come in due to uh, health anxiety. Um, sorry, the sense of. Um, actually, I've just realized that some of those parts are a bit um, incorrect with the slides. So there's more of fear of worrying about, you know, things that might not work out, people's judgment. Um, The body might feel very tired and feel very uh, uh, worried and lots of butterflies in our tummy. The next one is depression. Depression has a lot of emotions involving um, sadness, guilt, lack of pleasure. So things that you know in the past might have brought you a lot of joy. You feel like, oh, really, I'm not motivated to do it anymore. You might be crying a lot more um, and that the sense of um, helplessness um, or meaninglessness. Yeah. Um, in terms of cognition, uh, we find that the person has lots of uh, critical thoughts, negative thoughts, indecisiveness, and uh, even potential self-harm uh, ideations. There might be also uh, changes in the person's appetite. You might eat too much or eat too little, sleep too much or sleep too little. Um, and there's a, a common presentation of withdrawal. We tend to sort of isolate ourselves. 
Um, and this is extra tricky during this COVID time because, you know, we're asked to have uh, social distancing, which is part of the helpful strategy to, to uh, reduce the spread of COVID. At the same time, I just want to encourage all of us to rem uh, remind ourselves to do physical distancing. So we distance physically, but we want to still connect with others, um, you know, uh, whether it's through webinars or through uh, online, you know, still chat with your family members, still chat with others, don't go complete isolation because um, that's when it becomes uh, unhealthy um, and unhelpful. OK, so now that you've identified some of your stress symptoms, um, write that down. And the next step is I want to invite you to just pause for a moment and consider what could be a stressor for you now? What is bothering um, you? Is it an aspect of your health? Is it an aspect of your work, relationship with uh, colleagues, or is it work commitments? Um, the rapid changes in workplaces, or schools and things like that? Or is it a family issue? Is it something to do with your children, your childcare, um, uh, relationships with extended family or friends? <laughs> House chores. This this is so uh, such a real thing at the moment. I mean, all of uh, many of us who are you know parents or um, and also working professionals and all that, you start being inundated by these kind of things now. How do you work from home? It sounds so glam, but how do you work from home while juggling the kids? You know, running and pulling your feet, and then you have to go and mop the floor and clean the toilets and all that, wash dishes and cook. Um, it's really tough. You know, I I can attest to it. I, I struggle with, my, with it myself. So, you know, what is bothering you? Sort of do a, a quick check in. Um, is it finances? Is it unpredictability? A lot of companies are potentially going through uh, work reshaping and restructuring. Is it the unpredictability? Yeah. So if you can again write that down. And then the fifth step is we want to consider what could be a resilient coping strategy that we can start to uphold in our lives. I know many of you would have uh, very fantastic coping strategies already. If that's the case, uh, well done. Keep up the good work and see if there's any of today's refresher introduction uh, strategies um, be able to sort of adopt into your life as well. OK, so we're going to talk about helpful strategies. Um, I'll share a few um, key ones with you. Um, and this webinar is intended to be as an introduction of those strategies for you. Usually if we're uh, seeing you know, each other in session, obviously we will have more time to really dive in and go deep into it. So um, for now, what I encourage you to do is um, listening to it and see if there, there are things that you can apply and or if you need further information uh, and perhaps that's something that you can talk to your uh, health professionals um, to build your skills on those things. OK. First and foremost, um, most of the time people jump in straight into you know, strategies on how to look after yourself and, this, and things like that or exercise and, and whatnot. But I'm a firm believer in pausing for a while and getting our bearings right. Um, my first and foremost would be to encourage us, focus on what matters most in your life. Because when situations are stressful, when things are curveballs are thrown at us from every direction, it's really important for us to just uh, get our bearings clear again know what's most important in our lives, what is the, the key essentials, um, whether it's, you know, for you, it might be the, the biggest priority for my, my life right now is my health, for instance, or it might be my family, it might be my work uh, or peace. So what is that most important area? Lean in on that. Don't, don't, you don't have to feel guilty in this aspect. We don't have to get everything perfect and everything juggling. Yeah, what's important is just know what's most are uh, crucial for our lives and we want to lean in more towards those direction and we start to align ourselves um, with those core values. So if you can picture a compass, if you see the picture, um, don't just let, you know, an alarm clock guide your life, like, you know, appointments after appointments, but I encourage you to have like a compass to guide your life. Um, we feel most lost when we are not aligned with what uh, matters most to us. Yeah, we chase our tail in every direction. So um, identify what's most important for you and then simplify all the rest. You know, we all have a finite number of resources and time in a day. We can't do everything, but we can do the things that are, um, matter most. So give yourself permission to do that. OK, so 
perhaps it might mean that, you know, usually we might have incredibly high standards on our house cleanliness or, you know, everything must be top notch and things like that. You know, but when situations are stressful, we have to just be realistic. OK, maybe some of those things I got to adjust those expectations. Are there any things that can I could um, outsource to others to help me? Are there certain things that I could work a bit more collaboratively with my husband or wife or children to share the load together um, to make things more workable? Yeah, uh, if you're a teacher or if you're a manager and things like that, how do we manage uh, juggle that a little bit so that we just focus on what's key? Yep. Next, um, I would highly suggest um, practicing mindfulness. So um, some people are aware of this term, but some to ask some others, this might be a, a still a, quite a, a new concept. So I'll, I'll explain that to you. So what happens is our minds, our minds can often be a um, problem solving machine and it's, it's pretty good at its job. Uh, our minds are always scanning for what might be uh, tricky and what might be uh, threatening. Yeah, um, the problem with that is if we overdo it too much, we are always on a state of, as I said, arousal. We're constantly worried if we are overly just focused on problems. And sometimes our body can become almost like an out of control time machine. If you look at the picture over there. Um, sorry, you will see that there is the uh, present moment. Um, future and the past. Often our, our minds our, uh, can, can keep jumping from the future to the past. It might be that we are always in the future. We're so worried about, oh no, what's going to happen next? Am I going to still have my job for next year? Uh, how's my children uh, going to cope with studies? You know, majority of this year they haven't been studying much, um, things like that. Or it might be that, you know, we are, whenever we talk to someone, we immediately jump to the future. Oh, I'm sure he doesn't like me or my boss uh, really dislikes me and things like that. So that's someone that keeps um, living in the future. There might be some of us that are always stranded in the past. Uh, we keep replaying back past in incidences like, oh no, why did I allow that to happen? I should have done this better or that person should have done this for me um, and things like that. So if someone is often, their mind is always stuck in the past, um, the person tends to have a lot of sadness and depression. Um, and if a person's often stuck in the future, they tend to have a lot of stress and anxiety. Some of us could be um, jumping uh, front to back all the time. Now, but if we really um, think logically and ground ourselves, we know that none of us really have this time machine. Uh, in our lives. None of us have the ability really to jump to the future or to the past. Um, so it's actually a futile work. Um, it just distresses us and it amounts to nothing. Because if we are always in the future or in the past, we do nothing in the present moment. We're always distracted. We neglect our current relationships. Uh, our work performance decrease because we're always over worrying about things and we're not really doing the things that we need to do. Yeah, so this is where mindfulness as a technique comes in incredibly healthy. Um, essentially, um, mindfulness helps you to anchor in the present moment, anchor in the here and now. So if you imagine um, an anchor, you know what's an anchor, right? Like, you know, a big um, boat uh, or a cruise uh, ship or, you know, um, when the waves come, um, you know, a huge boat, they want to stabilize the boat. Uh, keep it uh, safe. What do we do? We drop an anchor into the ocean to stabilize the boat, right? So in our own lives, we need anchors as well because there would be um, emotional stresses coming from different directions or, or, or changes and things like that. So um, anchoring ourselves and grounding ourselves is incredibly helpful. So what does mindfulness mean uh, as a definition? Essentially, it means paying attention just noticing and being aware on purpose in the present moment, in the here and now. And another important aspect of it is without judgment. So we just try to be aware of what's happening here and now. Um, but we uh, try to minimize having judgment to it, all those harsh criticisms. OK, so um, this afternoon I'm going to share with you two techniques. One of them is uh, mindful breathing. Another one is mindfulness of five senses. OK, I'm going to give you some pro tip when you're doing this um, experiential exercise. I'm going to do with you later on. Uh, your mind will wonder 
You know, you'll be thinking this and that. Um, that's OK. That's very normal. Um, all you need to do is just to return your attention again and again back to the present moment. OK, so we're going to do two experiential ex uh, exercises today. Um, and so if I can just invite you to sit back and relax. Uh, don't feel awkward. It might be a little bit awkward, but don't be because this is this is a very common thing. Um, and before you uh, sort of lean back, I would like to invite you to just bring up a thought that might be distressing you. OK, um, just bring up a thought that has been um, stressful to you in the past week or the past few weeks. It might be like, you know, um, Oh, uh, I'm worried about my children. Or I'm um, uh, I'm worried about my work. Um, you know, uh, I, I have this deadline. I can't complete it. So from a scale of one to ten, ten being very, very uh, severe distress and one being mild distress, try to find something that's about a five or a six for today's practice, just somewhere in between. OK. Do you have that thought in your head now? I'll just give you a few seconds. OK. Now try to buy into that thought, okay? Just really, um, when you keep thinking about that thought, where do you feel discomfort? It might be that you start feeling uncomfortable on your chest or in your tummy and things like that, okay? And that's all right. So what I'd like to invite you to do now um, is just to uh, practice some mindful breathing. So we're gonna sit comfortably um, and I'm gonna invite you to just close your eyes. Uh, you know, most of us are in our homes, whether it's on a laptop or on our phone. Uh, just close your eyes for a while. I'm not closing my eyes because I need to see <laughs> the screen, but please do so. Um, and I just want to invite you to just um, breathe. Breathe for a while. Just begin to take um, breaths as you inhale in. Notice how you're breathing. Notice the air coming into your lungs and notice how your chest increases um, as you inhale. And notice how you feel as you exhale out. Just breathe as you naturally do. If you want to slow it down a bit, you can. There's nowhere else that you need to be right now. Just, just focus on the breath. Notice your body sensations. How does your body feel when you breathe? From time to time, there might be thoughts that pop up in your head. Thoughts like, why on earth am I doing this exercise now? Or, oh, later I need to remember to buy bread. Um, whatever the thoughts might be, that's very common. That's just what our mind does. I want to um, invite you to just, just redirect your attention back to your breath. However many times different thoughts pop up, just do the same thing. Notice what's the thought and just redirect attention back to the breath. And as you breathe in and breathe out, just really feel your body becoming more anchored. Just feel your body becoming more relaxed and your breath slowing down and you feeling calmer. I'm just going to wrap up right now as you take a few more deep nourishing breaths to yourself. And as you breathe in, just breathe in strength. And exhale out anything that could be stressful. Just breathe in peace. And, and just feel your body letting go of anything that is um, burdening you. And just breathe in again, the last one joy and delight and you release away anything that is um, heavy and just feel yourself getting lighter and lighter as you become more and more relaxed okay. and anytime when you're ready you can please open your eyes now right so um, that's one way that you could um, do mindful breathing um, at home or at work wherever you're at um, this is a really, really good strategy that you could use. 
Um, there are many breathing techniques. You know, some some techniques are uh, deep breathing, square breathing, lie down breathing, uh, all those. Um, today, the one that I shared with you is mindful breathing. And this is a, a really good technique to anchor you in the present moment because you are not allowing your thoughts to be um, pulled in every direction. So if I were to put an analogy, like all these are thoughts that are floating on your head, instead of focusing on those thoughts, you just want to anchor in the present moment, which is your breath. Um, I often see sort of uh, patients or clients in the clinic and some of them are managers, some of them are moms, teachers and all that. And they often talk about, you know, they get uh, stressed and anxious. And we share this technique with them. They have um, uh, given very, very good feedback on how this technique could be just used at any time, you know, before you start work or before you take um, a travel somewhere or before you do a public speaking. Just do a quick mindful breathing um, in your in your own time. Yeah. OK, now the next strategy is called um, five senses mindfulness. Um, sometimes we call it a five, four, three, two, one coping technique. And essentially, it's a grounding technique um, where we want to ground ourselves in the present moment using your five senses. OK, it is very, very helpful, especially if, if you're experiencing some form of, you know, whether it's anxiety uh, or panic attacks. Or it might be that, you know, um, you are working, you know, writing emails and things like that, and you notice that your thoughts are being distracted everywhere. You're doing the time travel machine thing again, where you're, you know, you keep floating to the future and whatnot. So when those things happen, I want you to remember, okay, I remember the discussion that uh, the webinar that I had, you know, with Dr. Diana that we have today, that I got to do the um, five senses mindfulness. So what you could do is, again, uh, bring up that thought that was troubling you just now. Okay, we're going to do another experiential uh, exercise again. Okay, so with that thought in your mind that's stressing you out, uh, this time you can open your eyes. I would like to invite you to, um, when you have that thought again, how stressful are you feeling from a one to 10? Okay, and now start to list what are the five things that you can see around you, just around you, whether you're in school or at your workplace, in the kitchen, or in the hospital, wherever. Um, for me, I can see a clock, a laptop, um, books, my phone, a pen. Yeah, so five things I can see. And now what are the four things that you can feel around you um, that you can feel or you can touch? It could be your hands, your table, a pen, you know, your arms, your feet. Yeah, try to just push your feet into the ground. Just really ground yourself and anchor yourself. What are the three things that you can hear? Um, it might be you hear voices or people talking um, or it could be the fan spinning or you could hear birds chirping wherever you're at. And then what are the two things that you can smell or taste? You know, it might be a perfume, it might be the scent of a flower. <laughs> Most of us now are spe uh, probably smelling mask, right? The mask that we wear, okay? And then finally, what's the one emotion that you can feel now? Um, is it, um, do you feel um, calm? Do you feel peaceful? Yeah, um, sometimes we can also do what is the one thing of beauty that you can um, appreciate in your life right now? It could be uh, appreciating, um, you know, that you are loved or you're cared for or your strength, or you could appreciate that um, someone brought you a cup of coffee today. Um, you know, just something that could just help you to anchor here and now. So now that you've done the um, five senses mindfulness, you would essentially have already been anchored in the present moment because there's no way our brains can try to do all this scanning or what's around us and, and engage in the five senses and do the time, time travel by going to the future and going to the past. Our brains simply cannot do that. Yeah. So as we um, as we learn to practice it, um, of course, initially we might be a bit more distracted, but as you get really good at this mindfulness of five senses skill, you notice that you are able to just sort of um, come back here and now um, and ground yourself. And so after you've ground yourself, then I would invite you then redirect your attention um, to the thing that you were supposed to do, that which is the important thing. So for instance, 
um, if you were supposed to spend time with your children, you were supposed to be playing with them and you're supposed to be playing Transformers with them or Lego or something like that. And you, you notice that your thoughts are going everywhere. You know, you're pulled by different directions. That's when you're going to say, ah, I want to do my mindfulness now. Anchor yourself in the present moment. And then after that, redirect your attention back to the thing that you're supposed to do, which is playing with your child um, or, you know, writing a report, whatever that might be. OK, so that's the five senses. How are you guys doing? Is your brain still OK to uh, absorb information? Um, it is quite a lot to take in, actually, because, you know, it's just a one hour webinar. Um, but I hope you're, you're OK. Uh, I don't want anyone feeling stressed from all this. So um, don't expect yourself to have to have, you know, mega learning curve straight away, but you can sort of take time to digest this information. All right, next. Um, the third important aspect in terms of healthy coping strategies is I would definitely say get your basics right again. OK, um, really come back to the core basics about healthy lifestyle. Um, the fundamental pillars of a healthy lifestyle is we really need to eat well. So we want to consider what have we been eating our meals on time? Have we been eating uh, healthy options? Are we doing McDonald's every night, every day? Yeah. Um, uh, how's your sleep? Are you actually getting enough sleep? Um, this is a, a, a big issue at the moment during this COVID period, um, especially with school children. I have so many parents bringing in their teenagers or school children um, uh, because of you know school refusal and um, as well as disrupted sleep routines because more people are going on social media, watching TV all night and things like that. Uh, I have a lot of people that are sleeping at you know three or four o'clock in the morning. Um, they start to sleep and then they sleep all the way until the next day at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock and their whole sleep routine is disrupted. And then uh, no wonder they complain about um, my body's feeling weak. Uh, I, I don't have concentration. I can't pay attention and get feeling irritable. Yeah. So again, come back to the basics. Um, it's no rocket science in that sense where uh, sleep is a priority and eating well as well. Um, get movement in, get back into your body, some form of exercise because we are all sort of housebound uh, quite often now. So it's really important to be able to do some form of movement, uh, whether it's just home exercises um, and there are lots of resources on YouTube where you can sort of do, you know, how to uh, put in some movements, whether it's just some quick jumping jacks or things like that, or maybe going out, walking around the house, doing some nature walks and things like that. Um, and the next one would definitely be um, getting another important basics in your life, right, which is connecting with others. Um, you know, just checking with yourself. Have I been uh, having some quality connections with people lately? You know, talking to a trusted friend uh, or talking with our spouses or family members, you know, um, that's important. I would like to also highlight here in terms of structure to the day. Um, it's also really important to be mindful of screen time. I know that during this um, pandemic period, you know, the use of screen time has just skyrocketed. Um, you know, there's online school, online things and that. Um, but just just being mindful of that, because often when we spend too much time in social media, uh, a lot of people start to feel a sense of uh, sadness because we, we tend to compare ourselves with others. Um, and please bear in mind that, you know, the pictures that people post online uh, are, are not necessarily be the most realistic ones because people only post the happiest pictures that they have when things are doing superly great. But if we are sitting there, feeling really sad and our worst, uh, sort of worst moments, scrolling mind mindlessly. And then we compare our worst moments with other people's best moments. It, it just, uh, yeah, it's unhelpful in those moments because it's unrealistic. Um, so just being mindful of screen time and instead channeling your attention on uh, things that might be more helpful instead. Um, which brings me to the fourth uh, important thing about resilient um, coping strategies. Um, which is to really prioritize your self-care. So if I'm going to pause for a moment and ask you, do you have something that you're doing right now um, that enhances your own self-care? Right? Is that? Um, often parents or adults might say, oh, I don't have time for that. But essentially, self-care is really important. It is not selfish. It's, um, it's important because you cannot pour from an empty cup Right. If um, if you imagine that this is a cup, I'm just going to open up this water bottle. Yep. If this is this cup um, and if your cup is empty, 
it's quite full now, but if it's empty, imagine that you can't pour out to others. You can't really uh, look after uh, your, your family or your children that well um, or do your work that well because uh, we are not thriving. We're not flourishing. Yeah. So try to remember yourself like you're a plant or you're a phone trying to, you know, you're look at the battery. Uh, where are you at? So just remember to to pour out yourself and recharge yourself. Um, so how, how that might look like might be just to intentionally carve out me time or couple time uh, for yourselves. So it might be, you know, first thing in the morning, if you need to, if your children uh, are up, then I might say just wake up a bit earlier, 15 minutes, 30 minutes earlier to have a little bit me time for yourself. Um, and that me time could be, you know, just sitting down, uh, having a nice cup of coffee or tea, um, reading, um, prayers, whatever that might be that, you know, that anchors you and strengthens you. It could even um, be maybe some, you know, uh, 30 minutes at the end of the day uh, where you have a couple time, you and your spouse or you and your uh, loved one or your family member, you just have a little bit of that connection time. Yeah. Um, in terms of if you're thinking about self-care activities, I would recommend um, the best self-care activities are those that could refresh strengthen and give you delight. OK, uh, not all activities are created equal. OK, sometimes we might say, oh, I, I, I am uh, recharging. My downtime is I'm watching, you know, uh, 20 uh, Korean dramas in the night. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm also a fan of Korean dramas, right? But is that your only way of, of recharging? Because, you know, after 20 hours of nonstop, you know, uh, K-drama time, perhaps we might get really tired as well. So maybe having a variety of activities in your life. Um, it might be things that uh, incorporate relaxation to your, to your daily time, um, such as, you know, the mindful breathing that we talked about earlier on. Um, it could be um, aromatherapy or having a little massage, uh, progressive muscle relaxation. Um, it might be, you know, anchoring in on things that, you know, gives you strength, like uh, reading, you know, things that are, are inspirational. Um, for those who have uh, faith and religion, anchoring in on prayer time or reading your um, your religious books and things like that. Um, another good one would be do more of what makes you happy. So start thinking about upholding a passion project. I know during this time of um, COVID and the pandemic, suddenly lots of us are more creative, right? Uh, people have gotten into uh, baking, gardening, uh, having little plants at home, creativity, you know. So just start having like a little passion project that you could sort of redirect your attention on, um, um, whether it's music, nature or sports. Yeah, um, and just able to build, to build, to build. And the fifth um, strategy um, that I'm going to talk about today is um, about our mindset. Now, we all know that um, oftentimes our our thoughts um, and the perspective that we have in life tend to um, affect us quite a bit. Yeah. So what I'd like to um, really encourage you today is to learn to watch your thoughts. OK. Um, instead of constantly just reacting to thoughts when they come, Learn to be able to watch when the thoughts pop up. So how that might look like is, again, I'm going to use my phone. I don't know if you can really see. Imagine that a thought pops up, you know, pop on top of your head. Just learn to watch it and say, oh, what's my mind up to? I notice I'm having the thought about, you know, about this. Maybe the thought is, uh, oh, I'm such a loser. I can never get things right. Um, why can't I get... I, I, I felt, you know, in this in this uh, assignment. And then we want to learn to just watch that thought without judgment. And we consider now, is that a helpful perspective? If I were to let this type of um, worldview or perspective lead me my whole life, is this type of um, thoughts or perspective in life going to lead me to a life that is um, delightful, meaningful, peaceful, and uh, joyful, you know? Is it going to lead me to a rich, full, and meaningful life? Or is it going to drag me into a life of uh, suffering, pain, you know, uh, anxiety, and things like that, disruptiveness, yeah? So 
most of the time we know this. If you were to really uh, sincerely ask yourself, just you, you, you roughly know whether a thought is pulling you into which direction. Yeah, and then just start looking at it. Um, are there any potential unhelpful thinking traps that I might have fallen into? Uh, am I having some unrealistic expectations? Um, sometimes we might have quite a bit of perfectionistic thoughts where we feel like everything that we do in life, all of them has to be perfect. Um, uh, it has to be 100%. Um, but we know that that's unrealistic expect expectations. Nobody is perfect. Nobody can get everything right at every time. So instead, a more helpful uh, life perspective I would encourage is a growth mindset. So knowing that um, everything is a learning curve, right? So as I'm doing something, um, if I didn't get it right, um, try to practice some self-kindness and self-compassion and say, OK, that's all right. That's a learning curve. I, I've learned from this um, and I'm just going to get better and better as I go. So there's that growth mindset to know that um, life is not, you know, constant exams, but it's more of sort of tutorials. We just learn and progress from it. Yep. Some other unrealistic expectations might be the all or nothing uh, mindset that, you know, I'm, I'm either all in or all out. I don't I don't want to be. Uh, it cannot be great. Um, yep. Is either they follow me everything or none at all. So these are very rigid thoughts like I cannot accept it if things um, change. Yep. Um, and in, in moments like that, when things are stressful, you know, especially during uh, pan pandemic or unpredictable times it's extra important for us to um, uphold cognitive flexibility and that means um, giving ourselves the permission to learn to be more um, adaptable and that might include learning to let go of certain things that do not serve us yep um, and that's okay to do that in fact it's a very wise thing to do yep um, other unhelpful thinking straps could be jumping into conclusion you know, uh, how sometimes we might be doing things and straight away we jump to the conclusion, oh dear, I'm going to lose the job definitely. Or, oh dear, um, this is going to be bad. Uh, or, you know, sometimes some people might experience some symptoms like their arms might be uh, painful or their heart might be painful and straight away think, oh, it's cancer or it's a really, really um, uh, terrible illness. And again, that's that time machine thing again, we're jumping to conclusions. Um, and over ruminating on them. So those are unhelpful, obviously. What's more helpful could be just, you know, go and get your medical assessment done or um, rationalizing your thoughts. Catastrophizing is another way of un, uh, thinking trap. Um, it might be that we over magnify the size of the problem. Yeah. So for instance, if um, our friend doesn't talk to us anymore or someone, uh, you know, uh, looks at us in um, you know, not, the, not the most pleasant way and we start catastrophizing, oh dear, this is um, really, really bad and we minimize our coping uh, ability. Yeah, again, that is unhelpful. Um, and another one could be labeling. Sometimes we, we hold labels of ourselves, um, you know, and that could be either labeling ourselves or sometimes we over label others. The person is always like that to me. I'm always a victim, things like that. So learn to watch those thoughts. Give yourself a little bit of distance between your thoughts and yourself. You are not your thought. Yep. Um, and you have the ability to be able to reframe some of those perspectives so that they can be more resilient, so that they are more grounded. Um, you see, the, the single, single thoughts are not really the issue. It's the thoughts that we constantly ruminate about. Those are the things that are, are the issues. Um, you know, um, because what we constantly pay attention to, what we constantly ruminate about, um, that tends to be where our attention lies. And then our actions start to uh, flow with those unhelpful mindsets as well. So today I just want to invite you to have the opportunity to reframe them, to be a more perspective, uh, helpful perspective, like what would a wise and compassionate mind think? How would it, how would be a, a more resilient way to look at this situation? So if situations are rigid, how can I be more adaptable, for instance? Um, if, if things are not going so well, then perhaps putting on a more compassionate mindset. OK, how can I uh, allow myself to learn from this event um, and grow from here? Yeah. So um, if the Murray Kondo way is a question about does it spark joy, then the flourish life way would be asking, does this spark resilience? OK, 
So if it's a, a mindset spark resilience, go for it. If a particular mindset doesn't spark resilience, then it's time to let go of it and say goodbye to those kind of uh, life perspectives. OK. Um, so that's about thoughts. And um, the next one that, um, that I would, um, in terms of just wrapping things up, would be to really um, encourage us to, to take a step to reach out and engage support. There is actually a lot of resources out in the community, and many a times we feel that we, um, we might not want to talk to people or we want to solve things all on our own, um, or, or we have to wait until when things are very, very big, you know, before we engage professionals. Um, you know, the smart and wise people actually seek help as early as possible, right? So you see successful CEOs, see successful managers, and uh, um, they, they always have life mentors, people that they go to because they want to learn the quickest way uh, to get themselves back uh, in their life on track and their health to be on track. So you and I can learn to do the same. Um, so if you're in a place where, you know, there are things in your mind that you're struggling with, I want to encourage you to start to talk to someone that you can trust. Um, go to your medical doctors um, and you could also seek psychologists, you know, uh, in your local communities. Um, if you go online to search for psychologists or counsellors um, and there's also psychiatrists um, that's, that's available within the hospitals, um, whether it's government or, or private sectors. Yeah, um, so that there's interventions available um, and we know that things like depression, anxiety and stress, those are highly treatable uh, conditions, especially if someone uh, seeks help earlier on. Yeah, and so some kind of, um, in terms of uh, treatment, it could be um, psychotherapy. So often people ask questions like, what's the difference between a psychologist and a psychiatrist? So psychologists and, and uh, counsellors would use um, psychotherapy, sort of thought therapy, and it could look like uh, cognitive behavioural therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy, uh, family systems, you know, um, solution focus, those kind of therapies to help us to uh, work things out. And psychiatrists uh, are specialised in um, using pharmacotherapy, medication, um, to, to be able to target and, and the, the symptoms and, and help reduce the symptoms and help us to be able to cope better, especially when we involve sleep and things like that. Um, yep. And so some, some aspects of it, you might also need medical doctors if you have um, other health uh, situations that could also, uh, uh, that needs to be addressed. Yep. Um, so in terms of um, resources, I'd like to share some of these resources for you. Um, emotional health, that could, uh, you know, there are befrienders that's available. Um, some of these websites here um, have good resources that you can go to. Um, the Center for Clinical Interventions have a, have a lot of wonderful self-help um, therapy books targeting um, sort of generalized anxiety, social anxiety. There's even booklets for perfectionism um, um, and things like that. Yeah. Um, and on um, the other side are mindfulness uh, resources. So if you, I would encourage you, if you're, start, you're, you're new on mindfulness, um, these YouTube um, uh, video links uh, can be helpful. Um, and that is sort of sort of guided uh, mindfulness strategies um, that you can use, whether it's the beginning of the day or um, just before you go to bed. There are some five minutes one and 10 minutes um, uh, clips that you can just play and, and learn to practice. Um, and as you get better at it, then you can sort of um, even do it on your own. Yeah. I would encourage you for whatever coping strategy that you're using, allow yourself to practice for about you know two to three weeks because initially it might not come as naturally, but as you practice with it, it then becomes a bit more of a second nature. Um, acceptance and commitment therapy. Um, Russ Harris has lots of good resources for that as well. Lots of good um, um, videos that you can um, watch and learn more about it. So uh, with that, um, I would just like to say thank you for spending the afternoon, um, you know, together with me um, and within the Health Transformation Program of Columbia Asia. We really appreciate you spending time with us um, and take care. And what we're going to do now is move to sort of um, 15 minutes of Q&A. Um, and we'll try to see what questions we can answer. And if there are some questions that might be more suitable to be answered by someone else, uh, we could look at it as well to sort of 
refer you and point you to the right direction. So with that, I'm just going to pass the time back to uh, Pavita, wonderful Pavita, who is uh, a manager that's in, in charge of today's webinar. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. You're welcome. Um, I have a question for you uh, to answer. You'll be able to see it under the Q&A above. OK, so I'm just going to try to pull up some of the questions. OK. Would you mind reading some of the questions out, Pavita? OK, OK. My friend is experiencing uh, cognition stress, so who should I or he consult? Cognition stress. Um, sorry, are you talking about um, lots of negative thoughts and things like that? OK. Um, if that's the case, yeah, um, I can encourage your friend to, to engage any psychologists or any counsellors in that aspect, um, just to see if there's any, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, the unhelpful thinking traps and things like that just now, and also learning to watch our thoughts and reframe those thoughts. So um, a psychologist will be able to help you with, with that, sort of uh, sit them through it and process those thoughts um, and upskill them. Yep. Next question. How do we know if someone is depressed? As many times people look happy on the outside, but they're actually very depressed. Yes, that's a really good question. Um, that, that, that's the thing about emotional health, isn't it? Um, and which is why I'm such a, a strong supporter of the importance of holistic wellness and health. Because oftentimes um, it's so invisible. On the outside, we might, we might seem to look okay, but on the inside, um, it is uh, the person is crumbling. So I might suggest if if you feel like you know your loved one or your family members or or a friend is um, has a little bit of uh, you know that they're struggling, um, perhaps arranging a time to just uh, check in with them, like uh, asking, hey, how are you doing? You know, just starting the conversation. How are you doing nowadays? Um, Often we just say, how, how are you? And we don't really mean to listen to it. But with this, you know, just pausing yourself, how are things going for you? Just lingering there for a bit. And, um, you know, perhaps that might just open the door for your for the person to uh, open up and share. And as they're sharing, what I want to encourage you to do is just uh, resist the temptation to solve all their issues at that point. Just try to be more of a listening ear first. Because sometimes when we bombard them with, oh, you know, I, you should do this, do this, do this. They start to go back into their little hole, you know, or, or isolate themselves or withdraw. So just try to listen in, be a good listener and, and show empathy. You can let them know that, um, wow, that's a really tough situation that you're going through. Um, and um, towards the end of it, um, if you want to, um, you know, you might be able to say, is there anything I can do to help you? Um, and you could then explore uh, helpful channels to go to, helpful resources. It could be to, to link them in with someone, uh, uh, professional help. It could be uh, spending more time with them hanging out. It depends on the severity of those uh, symptoms. Yeah, uh, but always um, sort of the first step will be just giving that platform for them to be able to share without judgment. Yep, uh, next. Is it normal to feel like eating when you're stressed? Ah, <laughs> yes, yes and no. OK, so as we said, uh, um, stress impacts people in many different ways. Some people, when they're stressed, they eat less. Their appetite goes lesser. Some people, they eat more when they're stressed. And that we call sort of like emotional eating. You know, we might start to binge on chips or, or ice cream and chocolate. Oh, no, I, I know I love ice cream. Um, but yes, if you find that you are eating too much or you know there's a change in your weight and things like that, um, that's often the time to think about maybe um, you need to sort of just reevaluate and get your basics right in your life again. Yeah, um, start to channel to, into more helpful coping strategies like some of the things that we've discussed today, like mindful breathing, mindful five senses, mindful eating, things like that. 
um, it essentially just probably means that you might not have really very good coping strategies yet. Um, so try to adopt that. Um, I would also want to put a little in, uh, important disclaimer here that um, as if, if you're a parent or you know if you or even if it's someone that you know have sort of unhelpful eating behaviors and that could be either binge eating overeating and then vomiting it out or totally not eating and, and, and starving and things like that um, it's important to just take note if there's any signs of you know eating disorders or um, sort of body dysmorphic type of uh, symptoms where someone is too uh, overly concerned about body appearance and, and getting very stressed by it. Yeah, if that's the case, I would really want to encourage you to, again, talk to someone that you uh, engage help uh, with a professional so that they can just uh, help you through the process. Um, yeah, I, I've had several um, young, young adults that came through the clinic who, who struggle with this. Um, and it was really impacting on their health. It started off from an emotional health issue and then it became really physical health issue. Um, yeah, and sometimes that could also uh, cause significant uh, dangers to their lives. So over time through, through intervention, the person became uh, much better and they're starting to eat healthily again. So there's definitely hope um, in all the situations that you know, we're going through. Yep, next. Can kids below seven get stressed? school going kids yes definitely yeah um you know stress fear anxiety those are um are very basic human emotions yeah young children can already experience um stress um you know so if, if you're a parent and just want to encourage you can just observe and notice uh how your, your kids are if there's a change in their personality um with children, it's a bit more difficult than, than adults because adults, when we are stressed or anxious, we could may, we might be able to communicate and say, hey, I'm feeling so stressed or I'm, I'm, I'm worried, I'm anxious. But with children, even when they are anxious, stressed or sad or depressed, um, sometimes their symptoms appear as anger. It appears as temper uh, outbursts because, you know, they, they don't they don't really know how to communicate it out um, and they might not be able to even really identify what's their emotion. So if you notice that your kids are, you know, behaving a bit differently than from usual, right? Or things that they used to enjoy doing, like, you know, they might they might used to enjoy going to this place and suddenly now they are resisting, they're kicking and, and, and making a big fuss. Just, just identifying what's going on there. Is it really a stressful environment? Is there perhaps the, it's not a good uh, suitable place? Or it might be that maybe they're just going through transition adjustment because you know some uh, this year has really been a lot of adjustments. They start school, stop school, start school, you know, and so that might be a disruption to the usual routine. And perhaps sort of coming up with a uh, again consulting the teachers or the mental health professionals to come up with a plan to help a uh, gradual uh, confidence building uh, for the child. Yeah, there's also intervention. Definitely that can be done. Uh, so for children to learn coping strategies and learn to stay calm. Um, yeah, so you could, um, you know, just get in touch with the local psychologists that's around your area uh, or mental health support team. Yep, next question. OK, this is the last question, which is if a pregnant woman is stressed, will the baby in the womb feel the stress? Hmm. Um, yeah, that, that, is, that is one that obviously, you know, we, we don't have clear cut answers to that. Um, however, of course, we know that in terms of holistic health, sometimes, you know, how we're, we're experiencing uh, may potentially have some, some level of impact in terms of our whole body processing and things like that. So if, you know, if um, someone is pregnant and, and of course, you know, uh, there's a lot of changes that's happening in your body and, 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 and there might be extra stress, Again, I would encourage you to reach out and um, speak to someone because with pregnancies, there are things like postnatal um, um, anxieties and postnatal uh, depression that often a lot of people are not aware of it. Mm. And so if you're noticing that, you know, again, you, there's a lot of change in your own personality. You used to be quite a bubbly person and all of a sudden now you're very, feeling very stressed, feeling very uh, irritable and, and anxious. Um, yeah, don't, don't, don't just cope with it alone. Uh, start to reach out, start talking to your medical doctors um, and, and, you know, 
the um, incorporate some of the helpful coping strategies into your body so that you know the pregnancy can be much smoother and the child can also uh, develop in, in, in your body much healthier way yeah all right Okay, that's all okay. from the questions, Dr. Dana. Thank you so much for your session today. It was really insightful. And I hope that the participants can actually take something out of this. You're most welcome. It's such a delight to be with uh, all of you today. And take care. So I hope to see you all next time. Bye.